what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about, first off, I have a tutorial about the comparison viewer. I've seen a lot of comments recently, and people are, are kind of surprised about the comparison viewer. So I figured I'd do a tutorial about it. That's one of the things we're going to be doing. And we're going to have a special guest going to drop in a little while. And we're going to talk about Final Cut Pro and NAB. So normally, this time of the year, we already know about Final Cut Pro presentations at NAB. This time, we have not heard anything about Final Cut Pro specifically. So last year, for example, we had the Final Cut Pro 10 Post Without Limits, LumaForge Ripple Training, the agenda was Apple product marketing. They talked about Final Cut Pro 10.4.1, the new update that just came out right before NAB. But this year, we don't have anything like that. There's been no announcements about the Apple marketing team being coming to NAB. Now, does that definitively mean there is no presentation at NAB? I don't know about definitive, but it sure is seeming that way, isn't it? So we're going to talk about what is going to be happening at NAB after we do the tutorial. We're going to do the tutorial first. And there's lots to talk about because there still could be something, an update to Final Cut Pro. Okay, they have, Apple has announced this version In the first half of 2019, an updated version of Final Cut Pro will include a feature to help identify and convert legacy media files. So obviously we're in the first half of 2019. So that means that update itself can happen at any time. Now, whether that's part of a bigger update to Final Cut Pro or more features, we don't know. But that update, I'm suspicious because it's been so quiet. There's been no announcements for Apple official being at NAB. Of course, there will be some vendors, third-party people that will be at NAB, different locations. Of course, LumaForge themselves is a big supporter of Final Cut Pro, so they'll have Final Cut Pro type stuff. But Apple specifically, an Apple-approved presentation at NAB, so far, we don't have any word that they are going to be there. So if they're not going to be there, it doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be no update. They still could do the legacy media update at any point. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the Facebook chat. I will probably see them. I'm, I'm monitoring a couple different places once, uh, once since we got started. Now, when I get started, the reason I go away with the countdown is because I have to go copy the link, post it in a bunch of different places, and it takes a few minutes, three minutes, four minutes, something like that. So that takes a while. So do you have any questions about Final Cut Pro and NAB? There is a lot of exciting things happening in NAB this year, absolutely. All right, let's do the tutorial now and then see if we have any questions about that. So the tutorial is on the comparison viewer. I keep seeing questions about the comparison viewer, so I figured I'd put together a tutorial about it, and here it is. Today we're going to look at the comparison viewer, side-by-side -side windows for comparing shots in Final Cut Pro, either with other clips in the timeline or still frames from the browser or the timeline. To open the comparison viewer, we go to Window, Show in Workspace, Comparison Viewer. The default comparison viewer layout is the image on the right is the image we'll be working with to adjust. It shows whatever is under the playhead in the timeline or the browser. The viewer on the left is the actual comparison viewer. It shows the previous edit or the next edit in relation to whatever clip the playhead is over in the timeline. Notice when I move the playhead, the viewer on the right changes. And now I have a new selection for the next edit on the right and the previous edit on the left. 
The first thing I want to do, I want to set up scopes for each window. So we do that in each viewer by visiting their view menu and choose video scopes. Keyboard shortcut Command 7. I also want to change the layout where the scope is going to be displayed. I'm going to change this to a single display for the layout option. Then I'm going to choose Show Guides and go back to the View menu and choose Vertical Layout. Now this to me looks like a vertical layout, but according to Final Cut Pro it is not. This is a vertical layout according to Final Cut Pro. It looks horizontal to me. And then I'm going to change the channels to RGB Parade, which is the one I use when I'm color correcting. Waveform RGB Parade. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side. The View menu, Single Layout, Show Guides, Vertical Layout. And then I'm going to switch to Waveform and RGB Parade. I'm going to adjust this viewer's height so it matches the one on the left. So now it's easy for me to compare these two shots based on the same scope setup. The viewer on the right shows me the image that's going to be adjusted, whatever is under the playhead in the timeline. So if I hit Command 6, it applies the default color correction, which in my case is color wheels, and opens up the inspector all in one. So any adjustment I do to the color wheels will be reflected in the clip in the viewer on the right. Here I'm desaturating it. The comparison viewer window is live, meaning wherever the playhead is scrubbed, it will update in the viewer on the right, and also update the previous edit and the next edit accordingly. The skimmer takes precedence over both the playhead and the clip selection in what is shown in both the main viewer and before and after clips in the comparison viewer, and also when using the keyboard shortcut to save a frame. But be aware that any adjustment you make in the inspector will be the clip under the playhead or a selected clip if one is selected. You can also use the comparison viewer with still frames that you grab from other clips that aren't before or after the clip in your timeline. In order to do that, go to the top of the comparison viewer and click on the Saved tab. Skim to a frame that you want to use for comparison and click Save Frame. I can save up to 30 frames. In order to see my saved frames, I go to the bottom left of the Comparison Viewer and click Frame Browser. The Frame Browser opens up with all of my saved frames. In order to use one of my saved frames, I just click on it. If you don't want to click on it, use the Option key and just hover over the frames. You can also save a frame by clicking the plus button in the Frame Browser. In order to delete a saved frame, just click it and hit the Delete key. To close the Frame Browser, click the red Close button, or just go back to the Timeline tab in the Comparison Viewer. Probably the best way to save a frame is to assign a keyboard shortcut in the Command Editor. Go to Final Cut Pro Commands Customize, search for Comparison, and then click the Save Frame command. I'm using Control F. Now when I want to save a frame, I navigate to the frame I want to save and just hit Control F. You can also choose a frame in the browser, but be aware that the skimmer is live. So as soon as you move it, the frame selection will change to whatever is under it. If you want to use the skimmer in the browser, either use it with the keyboard shortcut for saving a frame, or turn it off with the keyboard shortcut S after you make your selection.
once you have your windows and scopes laid out the way you want, save your window layout. Go to the Window menu, Workspaces, Save Workspace As. I'm naming mine Comparison Viewer 03. And then I'm going to put double spaces before the name so it sorts to the top of the list. Click Save. Now when I go back, Workspaces, I'll go to my default window layout when I do color correcting, and I can immediately go back to the Comparison Viewer. Another tip for your keyboard shortcuts, go to Commands, Customize, and choose Export. I save a copy in Dropbox for easy access from just about anywhere. So there you have it, a very efficient way to use the Comparison Viewer in Final Cut Pro 10.4.4 or later. So everybody, look who we have, Patrick Southern. Hey guys, how's it going? So what is what is this place? Behind oh, this is our this is our lab area. Wow. This is where we uh, you know test various jellyfishes, and uh, I'm hanging out here today because well I'm working between multiple jellyfish. Uh -huh. So what's a, yeah. what's a jellyfish for those who don't know? For those who don't know, a jellyfish is a shared video editing workflow server thingamabob with a dealamajig. Here, let me see. Can I? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, there, there it is. You can see the handle. Yeah. <laughs> and if I, can I tilt it down? Uh, uh, there well, it is. I, there it is. I think it's mirrored and backwards, but hey, there is uh, a jellyfish out in the wild. So for those who are wanting to work in Final Cut, and uh, work with a team like an assistant editor or with a graphics person or someone working in audio. We've got the jellyfish so you can connect directly to the jellyfish and work together off the same footage um, and with the same series of libraries. So that is uh, that's jellyfish for you. So I just put up the uh, jellyfish code. Oh yeah, that jellyfish code for five dollars off at uh, the Faster Together stage, huh? So I'm going to pull that up. Let me see. Here we go. The Faster Together stage, for people that don't know, is the big event at NAB this year. Wouldn't you say it's a big event, Patrick? I'd, I'd say it's a very big event. Yeah, we've got the Rio Hotel. We're we're taking over uh, Ballroom Nine, I think is what it is. Okay. But we've got a, a stage. Um, and an expo area, um, we expect, you know, uh, well, we expect like hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, so yeah, sign up, sign up now before the spots go. Um, and it should be really exciting. I mean, have you seen the lineup, Richard? Uh, no. <laughs> you, you, you've not seen the lineup. I have okay. seen the lineup. It, the lineup is absolutely incredible. I don't know how you're going to fit all those people, but I noticed that some of them are two and three working together. You have some yeah, of the teams. That's right. That's right. Um, the first team that we have are uh, Jonathan Morrison and uh, Justine Azaric, also known as I Justine, who are going to be, uh, well, I can't really say what they're doing. Um, I think that's still kind of somewhat secret. But then we also have the Oscar award winning team from the uh, live action short Skin, who are going to be coming and talking to us. We've got the editors from Atlanta, uh, the Donald Glover TV series, and uh, we've got. Robbie Carmen and Cheryl Ottenritter and John Aldrich from The River and the Wall, which just won the Lone Star Award at South by Southwest. Um, and, oh, who else do we have? We also have... How about Michael Cioni? <laughs> who? <laughs> There's this guy named Michael Cioni. I think I've heard about him before. Yeah. So... He'll be... Yeah. Yeah, the, he'll be giving the State of the Digital Union... Um, He's very entertaining. He oh my gosh! He was so good two years ago at Faster Together. He was so good last year talking about 8K a year ago. Yeah. And now he's going to be talking about the state of the what is it? The digital state of the union or the state of the the, the state of the digital union? The, yeah. Which is going to be fantastic. He's always a highlight, of course. 
yeah, we're really excited about him. We've also got um, someone from Kit Split coming and talk to, talking to us about uh, the future of filmmaking, as well as a woman who has a uh, she's got, I believe, two masters in color science. So she'll be coming and talking to us about um, how to color grade. Two. <laughs> two, masters. two masters. Two masters. I wonder if they conflict. Oh, with that I have no idea. So I don't know if you know this or not, but I know Robbie Carmen from years and years ago when he used to work at a place in Bethesda called Tiger Tigress, which was a reality TV show from the UK. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I used to. I worked for a company that used to go down there and help service his uh, XServe rate at that time. Did you, did you really? Yeah, absolutely. You, he helped with Robbie's XServe before he moved to a jellyfish. Before he moved to a jellyfish, back in those horrible days. I remember one time the guy I worked with, the, the lead technician, went down there and somebody had plugged a USB drive into the X, back of the XServe rate. And it really messed things up. I'm not sure what they were trying to do, but it was. I know my friend was sweating bullets that it was going to come back okay because it, it crashed everything. But nightmare oh, days. Oh, man. Nightmare days. Those X server raids, they were good for their time, but man, they, they certainly could be problematic. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's why we, <clears throat> you know, have a product. <laughs> well, that's exactly why. So, yeah. So one of the other things. So I was just talking be before I did the tutorial on comparison viewers about there's been no announcement of Final Cut Pro Apple and the Final Cut Pro presenting at NAB so far. We haven't seen right. any official announcement. Doesn't mean there's not going to be. But last year they announced about mid February, so it's not looking that great. However, that doesn't mean they're not going to have an update because. I think I was talking to Philip Hodgetts last week, and he said the legacy media update doesn't have to be that big of an update. That could come at any time, right? And that doesn't really affect, as far as he, as far as he knows, doesn't really affect the XML. So they could sneak that one in on us, because you know, this Apple, they're tricky people, and they love to surprise us. They like for you to think that you know what, what you're doing, predicting what they're going to do, and then they come out with a surprise. Yeah, those sneaky sneaksters. We'll f we'll find out. You know, I, I would love to see you know an expansion of ProRes RAW. I'd love to yes. see, you know, them get rid of legacy. Actually, I'm not in any hurry for them to do that. I bet that my guess would be that's something that comes along with an OS update. You know, that's probably something we'll see whenever the next version of macOS comes out. Um, by the way, did you see that the uh, WWDC invites went out today? No. You're kidding me. No. Yeah. The WWDC invites went out today. It's going to be in San Jose. Okay. Here, let me let me read. Uh, where, where is it? It is uh, right code blow mines. San Jose, wow. June 3rd through 7th. So... WWDC is coming up June 3rd. I'm, I'm excited to find out what they talk about, you know? Okay, I got it here. I say, okay, write code, blow minds. San Jose, June 3rd to the 7th. Now, yeah. Oh, this is not an invitation. It's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that even mean? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know that. That anyone really has, and I, I think, I think they're just trying to use uh, marketing language to make you really excited. Oh yes, I, I'll take on the challenge. They're trying to be <laughs> clever, which they are. Right. So a lot of times, these, the main theme for these things don't mean anything. They have nothing to do with hardly anything. Sometimes. Yeah. Who, who knows? Who knows? I mean, the Worldwide Developers Conference, of course, they're going to talk about code. That's what the majority of the event is. But I am still interested in finding out what happens at the keynote on, I'm hoping the keynote's on June 3rd. I don't want to wait till the 7th. Oh, my gosh. That's so long. No, they, it, that won't be on the 7th. They always put it up the day that, I mean, the first, the announcement when they first start, don't they, typically? I mean, typically, yeah. I think the, the WD, I think that's kind of like the kickoff to the entire event. Exactly. And that, that'll be live somewhat. I mean, it'll be live from the, oh, the Steve Jobs Theater, which we didn't get to go to at the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit last year. 
No, that's true. We didn't get to go to the Steve Jobs Theater. But we did get to go to one of their theaters. I forget which theater it was. Was it the Town Hall or something like that? Yeah, it's the it's the Visitor Center. Oh, you mean the one on, on campus? Yeah, it was the uh, the the one we always go to. Yeah, I I had the same seat I had last year. I had my name on it. <laughs> did you Taylor really? Taylor sit here? Yeah, they wanted to keep an eye on me. I think. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I mean, who 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 doesn't want to keep an eye on Richard? <laughs> I don't know about that. So. Um, one of the other things that we were missing last year, uh, so far this year, as far as NAB is concerned, was the Guru Gathering. And look what happened. Not only did Lumaforce step up and, and take over the empty spot that the Super Meat had, they also took over the Guru Gathering spot. That we did. So fast that we did. the other party. <laughs> That's right. I mean, the last few years we've had a very super secret party that I guess is not so super and secret anymore because right. we couldn't, you know, couldn't fit everybody in the the room we were in. Last year we had the room from uh, Vegas Vacation, okay. like the room oh, that yeah. the that, that Rusty rents out or something. You knew so, that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so we had that room last year, but this year it's going to be a little bit bigger of a party. Excellent. It's a ballroom or something, isn't it? What the heck is it? Some kind of a... Oh, I'd have to look it up. I, I don't actually yeah, I, think, I don't actually know off the top of my head. I think it said something about a ballroom or some kind of a bigger, yeah, definitely bigger room. But it's the same building as last time, right? Great question. I think it is because the Embassy Suites, it, you can walk to it from the convention center, apparently. Okay, Faster Together Party. It, yeah, Embassy Suites, Convention Center, Las Vegas, Chancellor Ballroom. Chancellor Ballroom, so that would be fantastic. I mean, I, that's the first event that I'm super excited about at NAB. Yeah, well, I mean, hopefully we'll have dinner at the Pepper Mill once or twice. <laughs> Armadillo, yeah. you know, Armadillo Willie's in Cupertino and the Pepper Mill. Uh, although that one meal at the Pepper Mill will fill you up for the entire week. Yeah. That yes. Huge portions. Yes, they do have huge portions. So I suggest splitting those meals. So I'm sure we're going to end up there at some point during the, oh sure during the NAB. I'm I'm, I'm arriving on Sunday. So I'll be going to actually Future Media Concepts has an event on Sunday night, content creators um, celebration. It has to do. Is that FMC? Yeah. I thought that was I thought that was somebody else. No, no, that's like uh, broadcast beat or something. No, is no, that FMC that FMC. they're sponsors of or something? Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's FMC, but it's actually officially NAB. It's an official NAB event. No, oh, got it. Most of the other ones aren't because it has to do with all their sessions that they have. I think they start on Saturday or Sunday all day. They have sessions for all kinds of things, including Final Cut Pro. I think Steve Martin's teaching one of them. Yeah, he probably is. Yeah. Steve Steve teaches with FMC pretty regularly. Exactly. Yeah, I – those those events are always a little overwhelming for me, the number of classes. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy being at them. I enjoy hanging out with the people. Um but the classes can sometimes be um, mind melting if you're not ready for them. Oh, I remember when I when I used to take those classes. I took the first one I took was actually from Abba Shapiro for Final Cut. It was down in D.C. at the convention center for Final Cut Pro. I think it was four, maybe or four yeah. or five, and I took it the class to get certified as a Final Cut Pro as a pro, not a trainer. And then subsequently, later on, when I was working at a company in Baltimore, I got to be a Final Cut Pro trainer up in New York, Apple headquarters in New York. That was, but I remember those classes are just, your head gets filled up and then you have a hard time concentrating on hard, almost anything. I remember I, when I took those classes, now I teach them and I have to keep that in mind. Yeah. It's so easy. It's so easy for somebody to to get overwhelmed, you know, like especially you do an hour of some complex topic and then you go in to do another hour of a complex topic. It can it can be a little mind numbing. So um, that's why I, I really appreciate those presenters who are like, OK, here are the five things that I want you to get from this class so that, you know, if you forget anything else, these are the five things that you remember. 
Anyway, well, Richard, I need to hop off. I've got a meeting I need to run into, but I just thought I'd stop in and say hi to you for half a minute. I'm not going to stay on much longer myself. The one thing, though, I've had requests at the Faster Together stage. Okay. Patrick Southern and the Flamethrower. <laughs> they want to see the Flamethrower live doing a ProRes Raw demo on the stage. I've had requests for that. You know, I don't think that uh, the Rio Hotel would be very happy if I brought a That's live true. flamethrower on stage. But maybe maybe sometime here in L.A., maybe I can uh, do something near our warehouse and, and have, you know, 20 or 30 seats lined up outside. <laughs> with with suits, with uh, flame retardant suits on? Maybe that's what we should. Maybe we should just do like a private class. You can sign up for our private flamethrower slash raw workshop that we do here at the LumaForge headquarters. That would maybe be a little bit safer. You know, keep it to small groups of like five to ten people. And you have to sign off. You have to sign your rights away in case some case of any in case some in case you lose your eyebrows or something like that. Yeah, (laughs) or your beard. Yeah, I mean, I have to be really careful about that, don't I? Yeah. Yes, you do. But anything lit, kind of a lit flame absolutely yeah you know i actually recently got a grill and and i'm surprised that my beard hasn't caught fire so far definitely got be careful with the flamethrowers so you're so that's going to be great sam's going to open up the president uh the faster together stage that is and you have all those great presenters with great subject matters um i'm not sure how many are going to be talking about final cut pro i know i just teen is and the other guy that the YouTubers, those are two YouTubers. Jonathan Morrison. Jonathan Morrison. Yeah, and and the team behind Skin, they edited in Final Cut Pro 10. Oh, did they? Okay. They did. Yeah, so we've get, this is the second Oscar winning uh, live action short in a row to have been cut in Final Cut Pro 10. So for those who say that it's not professional, there are two Oscars with Final Cut Pro 10 behind them right now. And there's at least there's at least one Emmy. Oh, who? Well, anyway, there's at least one uh, Emmy out in the world and maybe a Peabody. I don't I'm not sure. Anyway, so Final Cut Pro 10 hasn't hasn't quite e it yet, but they're they're working their way towards that. You know, I, I don't hear those things. You said people say that Final Cut Pro are professionals. I don't hear that. I, you don't hear that anymore. I don't hear the people that say stuff like that. I, I guess I just block them out. Maybe maybe they aren't, you know, speaking up as much as they used to about the issue. But uh, anyway, I'm I'm excited for the event. I'm excited for everyone to come to the event. Uh, Jellyfish 2019, I believe, is the code. Yeah, let me put it up there again while you're here. Yeah, Jellyfish 2019. Here we go. And the actual website you go to is FasterTogether.com. Very simple, very easy to remember. FasterTogether.com. Absolutely. Very cool. Thanks so much, Richard, Absolutely. for uh, having me on. I just wanted to jump right. on today and catch up with Final Cut Pro News. And since you were available and I wanted to do the tutorial that I played earlier, Alrighty, I will Very talk cool. to you soon, Patrick. Thank you. All right. Talk to you soon, Richard. Bye. Well, there you have it. The latest news on Final Cut Pro and NAB. I'm not sure if anybody's heard anything else about NAB and Final Cut Pro, but as I said, I think that because it's been so quiet that the Apple team could absolutely slip out a legacy media update that they promised for the first half. Don't know for don't know if they're going to, but that is certainly a possibility. So that's going to be it for today. I might come back on later. Um, maybe Saturday, like I've been doing. We have sometimes have a meetup on Saturdays. But if you want, let me see, fastertogether.com, we've already talked about that. Here's my Facebook page. If you want to follow along on Facebook, I have a public page you can follow along there. I think there's a way to be notified when I go live on Facebook. Facebook seems to be very, very popular for live formats. Of course, yesterday we couldn't have done it because Facebook was down, right? It was. So So anyway, I think I'm going to hang I'm going to hang up here there's no more questions. I'm going to come back on. I'll be back on live either on both of my 
places, facebook.com slash Richard Taylor TV or YouTube dot com slash Richard Taylor TV. Both of those are places that you can watch when I go live. I'm not sure how to do the Facebook one, but the YouTube one is you subscribe. Very simple. But if you have any, uh, one more thing, if you have any um, tips or anything about, if you've heard about Final Cut Pro, anything about Final Cut Pro and NAB, I have at fcpradio.com, I'm keeping a live blog here. Blog, it's just kind of a notes about things that are going on specifically to Final Cut Pro and NAB. These are the places that I will be going. If, just go to the main page, fcpradio.com, and you can keep track of that. So anyway, until the next time I go live, thanks everybody for tuning in, and I will talk to you later.